Well, hello there. Welcome to Treehouse Knits, episode 31. I'm Rachel, your host. Hope you're having a great week so far. It's been a while since we've chatted and I've been looking forward to getting back together with you. I have a few things to share with you today. We're gonna just quickly talk about the make-alongs that are happening in our podcast, Ravelry Group, Treehouse Knits. I'll share with you a couple of works in progress, a couple of finished objects, a few fun things that I've acquired along the way, and uh, talk about some upcoming travels that I'll be doing. So why don't we go ahead and get started? I don't know about you, but I've noticed on the interwebs and on Instagram, friends that knit, we're all experiencing this funk of what should we be working on? And I couldn't quite pinpoint what it was for myself. I've been a little bit scattered. I've also been doing a few different things other than knitting. And I came across uh, Jacqueline Salem. She is a knitter in the New York City area. She um, has a she had a Instagram story this morning where she reposted a, an artist. I think her name is Mari Andrews. She reposted. Um, well, she introduced us to this artist and I thought she had some really cute drawings so I checked her out and I came across this drawing of hers that I thought fit perfectly and I'm going to put it in right here. We, I think, are all feeling summer malaise. I had to look up what malaise was. I kind of knew the gist of it but I'm always curious what the dictionary says. Malaise is just that feeling that uncertainty that we're feeling, um, kind of a uneasiness of sorts, and we don't know why. So her interpretation of summer malaise is a dangling voicemail to return, a misplaced indirect longing, all the pressure of a weekend for four months, a to-do list full of open-ended abstract tasks, overgrowth, and look at that little balloon, a lost balloon flying into the sky, a buoyant, happy symbol that now feels out of reach and bad for the earth. I think we're all experiencing, not all of us, but some of us who've expressed that uneasiness, we're feeling summer malaise, and I think we should just embrace it and do, at this point, um, creatively, whatever we're inspired to do and not feel pressure to do anything specific. Which leads me to our summer mitten cal. I have been not feeling in the mood to knit mittens right now, and I know some of you also feel the same way. But we are winding down our summer mitten cal, and uh, it's not coming too soon. Next Tuesday is the last day for the mitten cal. We have got some amazing entries in there. And I think what I'll do is insert in here a screenshot of some of the finished objects that are in the FO thread for my podcast right here. finish you can definitely enter in the chatter thread I'll be drawing from the chatter, chatter thread next Tuesday and I will also be drawing from the FO thread and just to remind you of our prizes this cute little project bag and actually I'll show you <clears throat> well, that one? Mm. this summer inspired project bag that I created with these bathing beauties you'll also get a two skeins of phenyl garn in the blue and the cream color and then those really cute summer inspired ice cream stitch markers from Ann Tudor.
So let's push ourselves, put the wind in our sails, and get those mittens done, or at least posted in the chatter thread. And thank you to all of you who have participated. I think what I'll do is next Tuesday, actually next Wednesday morning, I'll cut it off at midnight Tuesday. Next Wednesday morning, I will draw the winners, and I will get in touch with you directly if you've won and announce them on Instagram and on the feed here in uh, on the Ravelry page. You know, and I wanted to announce that we did have a winner that I drew from the chatter thread in the Summer Mitten Cal, and that winner has already received her prize. It was Elaine VDP from Virginia Beach, Virginia. She was post number 81, and she knit the Flora Mittens. I'll put a picture of her mittens in here. So what have you all been working on? I'm curious if you have any works in project progress that, that are going on that are really floating your boat this summer that are really that have got you inspired and exciting. I know a lot of us are drawn to different types of fiber, linen, cottons, that kind of thing. Um, I have been uh, working a little bit on my mittens. <clears throat> These are the Anne's Flowers Mittens by Venka Roll. You've seen them before. I am this far <laughs> on the next mitten. I think what I might do is pick these up again in August or September when I'm inspired to knit on warm mittens again. Um, since I am not able to win anything and the summer mitten cal, I don't feel too much pressure, but hopefully uh, Janice and I have inspired you a little bit along the way and you've learned some things, that's for sure. The one thing that I have been inspired to work on I kind of um, put away my socks for a while and I wanted a project that fulfilled the need that socks fill that kind of just when you want to socially knit with friends and um, just not mindless but just something that's easy to pick up and put down and when I received the knit crate shipment a couple months ago I think you saw that really um, saturated minty green color And it was screaming for me to knit this pebble beach shawl. So here is where I am with that. I think it, oh, this, I love this yarn. This yarn has a bit of cashmere in it, so it's super soft to the touch. And it really is showing off this pebbly pattern. I am about 55% done with the shawl. I'm making the large size. And oh, I just love this color. I think um, I think this is a really nice marriage of yarn and pattern for sure. I did have a few points in here where I got a little off track with the uh, the yarn over sections, but I fixed them, and uh, it's pretty potato chippy kind of knitting. I, it does get a little boring after a while. Now I'm on those long rows with over 300 stitches, but. This to me is going to be one of those knits that I think I will enjoy wearing a lot. I'm using my Chiago lace, 40 inches, size 6. That's pretty much the size that Helen Stewart, who, that is the designer of this shawl, she uses a lot of size 6s in her patterns. I, I love these Chiagos. They're inexpensive, they're fabulous. Something interesting happened, happened to me a couple weeks ago that I, sh I will share with you now because there was a happy ending. But I was actually using my signature Needle Arts on this project. And I just went to go and pick up the project to work on. And it just, the cord came right out of the needle. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'll show you. It just came right out. It slips back in, but anyway, needless to say, a bunch of stitches fell off because I was knitting away with this needle and the cord was not coming with it. And so anyways, I was able to pick up all the stitches and I, I noticed on the package, it does say a warranty, a lifetime warranty against manufacturing defects on needle. And I really did not do anything I don't normally do when I'm knitting, so I know I didn't break it on my own. I called signature. They told me to send an email with my mailing address and a picture of what happened and I think it was four days later came the new needle for me. So kudos to Signature Arts for standing behind their product and hopefully 
uh, that won't happen to me again. Hopefully it doesn't happen to any of you. <laughs> but I thought that was great how quickly I got it in the mail. <clears throat> so anyways, back to knitting. You saw my Pebble Beach. I did have one uh, uh, nitty, knitted F.O., <laughs> but I'm not sure if these are going to work. You remember I was knitting that long sock tube of Cubs, Chicago Cubs, um, I think it was called Wave the Flag Colorway by, oh, who was it? Chicago-based, oh, I'm sure you guys are all yelling it out to me. It's all in, if you're interested, it's all in my on my Ravelry project page. I have all the information for everything I'm talking about. But I knit a long tube and then I separated the tube in half and put in heels and toes. This is going to, this particular pair of socks is going to someone who has a very large foot, over four, size 14, I believe. So here are the finished socks, but here, I'll, for dramatics, I'll just do this. Where is that toe? Where's that toe? Oh my gosh, these seem huge. My children are laughing at me. When these were just kind of laying out to be blocked, they were like, who are you knitting for? The Jolly Green Giant? <laughs> so I don't know what to do, but I measured and unfortunately it's about, I don't know if I put them in the wrong spot or what, but it's almost 14 inches unstretched. So, <sighs> I don't know, what do I do? Do I take the heels out and put it back together and make, I don't know. Unfortunately, it's for a friend's brother, so I don't know. They just seem huge <laughs> and they took forever. But that's my finished object that has me a little bit worried. I'll let you know what happens if it fits his foot. It's a long foot. Um, but what I was inspired to do the last couple of weeks is get my spinning wheel out and try a little bit of spinning again. Mars, hey Brownberry, and Natalie from Remembrances, Remembrances Pottery, they were doing, I think they got together, yeah, they were together live spinning and it, it inspired me to get my wheel out. So, and as I was spinning, they had uh, a segment where they were showing the um, plying and I was at that point I was plying and it was like whoo perfect timing because it helped me so thank you for the inspiration and the guidance on that Natalie and Mars. Um, but so what I've worked on the first thing that I pulled out my mother-in-law gave me a ton of fiber that I can practice on and this um, first one that I pulled out is an alpaca merino silk from Susan's Spinning Bunny which I don't even know if she's around selling yarn, um, selling fiber anymore, but the sheep's name were Sherbert and Ernie. So this is what happened. I, I made my plies and I plied, it's a two ply, very lumpy bumpy i think it's plied loosely but natalie pointed out that sometimes a loose ply is what she's going for so this is just what the yarn became <laughs> i'm just trying to keep the yarn from breaking as i'm spinning it up and plying it but um pretty color you can tell why it's called sherbert i mean it looks like sherbert but I guess the sheep wasn't this color. So I did this, and then I had some leftover on my wheel, or on the bobbin. So I happened to have a cream color and a blue on the bobbin, and I thought, well, I'm just going to ply them together with this, and it kind of came out with this fun. This is the original, and this is with the cream color plied. So just a little bit of different look. And then the um, second fiber that I pulled out was this Anzula hand-dyed spinning fiber, 50% superwash merino, 50% Tessa silk. Oh.
incredible. When I took some pictures of it and put it on Instagram. When I prepped the fiber, what I liked, what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking these braids and you unbraid it and then you just pre-draft it a little bit and it just turns into this amazing fluff. And I'll show you, this is some that I've pre-drafted already of my next spinning project. Um, it just turns into this gorgeous fluff. And if you can imagine, I'll put the picture in here from Instagram. It was like a cloud, just shiny. All oh, that, that silk in there was just so gorgeous. And I like the results of this even better than my first one. I felt more confident all around. So this is what looks like a worsted weight. <clears throat> But I, I look forward to spinning with silk again. I really, really enjoyed that. And then now what I thought I'd try and do is spin for more of a DK weight. Everything's been pretty worsted or bulky weight so far that I've, I've spun up. And here is the ply. I'm doing my best to um, spin it as thinly as possible. So this right here is turning into this. And this is 100% Superwash Merino um, from a business that's no longer in business too, from my mother-in-law. Um, but I just thought the colors on this are so gorgeous. So this is, what I did is it came actually in a ball of roving wound up and I separated the two, I separated it into half with my scale. And uh, this is one bobbin that's finished and then this is the rest I need to spin up on the other bobbin, and then I'll do a two-ply. I think after this, I'm ready to try a three-ply <clears throat> and see how that goes. But I'm really enjoying the spinning. Um, I have an Ashford Kiwi, not a Kiwi 2, but the original Kiwi, and I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. It's a, it's a pretty simple machine to understand, a uh, machine, simple spinning wheel, which is a machine, I guess, to understand, and I think it's been perfect for me. Um, me, you know, a, a relatively new spinner, but I am thoroughly enjoying the spinning. So on to some things that arrived at my doorstep. The latest Sleeping Bear Dunes color came to my doorstep, and it's a plucky. It's gorgeous. It's Leelanau Specialty Cut Flowers Sleeping Bear Yarn Club in their feet weight, which I don't have any of their feet uh, base, 425 yards. It's a 9010 Superwash Merino Nylon. I'll just give you a close-up of those. It looks like the colors of a fresh cut bouquet. In fact, I think on the Woolen Honey site, they had a picture of, it's like a monthly bouquet that you, you receive, and it, it did definitely look like it, those flowers inspired this colorway. I also got a couple of, hello, I'm really close there, a couple of uh, Knit Crate uh, subscription um, uh, yarns in the mail. The first one, that this is July, and um, this is actually the sock crate that came. It is two colors. One, it's a, their compact color in their heels and toes base. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and the pattern that I got is the socks here by Hannah Tyson, Tyson Hyla socks. Very, very nice feel and a really nice color. I don't have a lot of green in my stash. And then the, the uh, knit crate <clears throat> regular box, I guess. Oh, you know, I didn't mention primary colors or modern primary is the kind of theme that Knit Crate went with this this uh, month. And this is the beach ball cowl. And then they have a pair of yoga socks that you can crochet. So the crochet is the socks. The um, cowl is the knits. And I got... You know, you get four, an option of one of four colors. They sent me dashboard to review. And this is in a worsted weight. So interesting colors together. I think they're really pretty and uh, a nice colorway, I think, for f something fall. So I will have to investigate, look through my stash, and see if there's any other colors I can pair with this. 
you know, if you have any ideas of what you might do with this, let me know. But I love that teal in there with the gold and the purple and that navy blue. I'm into navy blue lately. So that was the knit crates that I received. Thank you to Knit Crate for sending those to me. If you're interested in those knit crates, there's a link in my Instagram for a 20% off coupon code. Now, last episode of Creative Obsession, Carrie, she talked about an art, um, what's it called? Uh, work Art work box? I'll put it down here. But it reminded me that I should share with you something that I have received in the mail um, that is actually on sale right now. If you're interested in learning more about it, it's called Art Snacks. I think I learned about it on Instagram. Now, I didn't go to any art school, and I find that a big part of what one misses out when they don't go to art school is learning how to use all the different mediums and tools out there in the art world. If you go to an artist supply store as a commoner, there are just so many gadgets and tools and different ty types of paints. You don't understand how to use them at all. And there is a company out there, maybe many of you have heard about it, called Art Snacks. And they do a monthly subscription. I've purchased these on my own. I just think it's a neat concept. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. But what Art Snacks is, it's a small curated box that comes to your doorstep <clears throat> each month. And it includes some um, unique art supplies that you get to try out because they're, it's a snack. It's basically an art snack. So what happens is in the mail you receive the box and in the box is this, it's kind of like a bookmark and then it explains what's, what is in each um, art snacks. I think they retail for 24 or 25 bucks, but right now all 27, uh, all 2017 Art Snacks boxes are 50% off. So most of them are $13 for the box. And the box is way worth more than $13. So if you wanted to just dabble in some of these, I'll show you what was in this one. This particular one was from August, 2017. And in it, every Art Snacks box gives you a little Art Snacks snack sticker. And then the assortment of supplies, hmm. I don't know about you, but I have crappy brushes, so I appreciate when a true artist tells me what brand to get for art um, brushes. This is by Princeton Velvet Touch Long Round, and according to the um, the information here, it's a fourteen twenty five value. So this brush alone is worth more than the thirteen dollars the whole box is right now on sale. And then it came with <clears throat> I'm not going to take it out of here, but this is in grayish blue. This is acrylic ink, and it's Amsterdam acrylic ink. Shake well before using, then feel free to work directly out of the bottle with your brush or use the convenient ink dropper. They talk about how to use it. And what else is really fun is on YouTube, they have a channel and they talk about each box. And there's an actual artist who does something with the contents of the box. So you get to watch someone using them. I mean, sometimes I don't even understand how to put things together. Like for example, the other component of this Art Snacks box is this Zig Kokoro letter pen body and ink. So here's the body and then here's the ink. It'll be nice to watch somebody actually put this together. But this is derived from the Japanese word, words Kokoro meaning heart and Iro meaning color. This pen was made for you to choose each part separately to match your mood. From the pen's body color to the nib style, mix and match a variety of features to express your unique cre creativity. This month, we've included an extra fine brush tip to refill for your new pen body, perfect for all your inking needs. So that's cool. And a lot of times, uh, the Art Snacks, they are getting kind of first dibs on new products that, so that they're sending out to you. And then the final thing in here was this Faber-Castell Echo Pigment Fiber Tip Pen. So what's good about this is this pigmented ink is light, fast, and waterproof, so you can lay ink or water color on top of your sketched lines carefree. They don't, it doesn't smudge. So not only is the uh, Art Snacks YouTube channel helpful, but they're on Instagram as well, and they use hashtags every month, so you can see what artists and creators are making with the Art Snacks packages. So 
if you want to dabble and see what it's like, but you don't want to lay out the 24 or five bucks, check out that sale that's happening right now. Because, and I just did look on, there are, um, there's still a lot of stuff available from 2017 for half off. So check that out. Another thing that I've been inspired to do is read. I, um, in the winter, I didn't read a lot. I was just really involved in the knitting and summertime for me, feels like reading season. So the last time since we talked, I read The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I'll insert a picture of the book here. That was a book I could not put it down and I have not, I have not read a book from beginning to end in a day and a half to two days in a very long time. First of all, I don't have time to do that, but it just so happened that I did have time to sit and read. I couldn't put it down. It's a great story about a family. I think it's in the 70s. Um, the, the dad comes back from Vietnam and he has PTSD. He moves his family up to become homesteaders in Alaska. And it's told from the voice of the young daughter. Such a great book. You cannot put it down. And then I just finished um, <clears throat> The Alice Network. That was another great book. I had read a lot of World War II books, so I was kind of like, oh, not another one. But this was World War II, World War I and II, and it was about the spy network, female spy network. Um, for the British in France and it was a great read as well. It uh, Every chapter went back and forth from the two main characters and in the end they come together. What have you been reading? I would love to get some ideas from you if you want to just uh, write them down below. That would be amazing and we can kind of share with each other what we're reading. So I think that uh, that's it for information and what I've been working on and it's been great to chat with you today. Planning on doing a little bit of traveling uh, next week, headed to the Chicago area, Schaumburg for Stitches Midwest. I've never been to a Stitches show, so I'm very excited about that. I will be meeting up with the ladies from the Three Ply podcast, as well as Megan from Wool and Cookies. Two podcasts you guys should check out. Super fun ladies. They do really, really cool stuff. Um, I, you'll really appreciate the different projects that they do and the types of yarns they use. And I look forward to meeting them in person next week. And if you're going to be at Stitches Midwest, stop me and say hello. I would love to meet any of you who are planning on being there. That's the reason I do this podcast. As you know, I always say, really, it's just to connect with everybody out there who has similar interests as I do in the fiber arts. So um, I love reading your comments below. I love just interacting with you guys on Instagram. That's where you can find me the most on Instagram. And uh, again, next week, fiber or uh, stitches Midwest. And then in August, I'm so excited. Let me see if I have the, <laughs> the right dates. The um, Michigan Fiber Fest on Saturday, August 18th from 3 to 5. I will be there all day on Saturday, mostly with my knitting guild from Grand Rapids here. But from 3 to 5, there's going to be a podcaster meetup, our own little version of Rhinebeck here in the state of Michigan. It's going to be in the carousel area. I think that's what they said. I don't think there's a carousel. I think it's more of a, it's like a round building, open air building, what's the word I'm trying to figure out, but you'll find it. Michigan Fiber Festival isn't that big, but it is a great show. So if you've ever considered um, coming up to Michigan for a Fiber Festival, this is the one. It's awesome. Great. Um, oh, the barns are all filled with really great vendors. You get to see the actual sheep and animals. There's bunnies and goats and sheep and Lots of great classes. Check out their website, Michigan Fiber Festival. I assume it's michiganfiberfestival.com. I know they're on Facebook too, but we are having a podcaster meetup three to five. Um, so come check it out if you're near Michigan and interested. So I think that's it. We've made it to the end of the podcast. I appreciate so much you joining me today. It's been great to catch up. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye. Uh -huh.